Believe it or not, one of the questions that I get asked most often when I'm out filming is what software do you use or what software do you recommend? That, of course, with what camera are you shooting with? Uh, so today I'm gonna answer the, the first of those questions. What software do I use? DaVinci Resolve. I guess I'm answering the second one too. What software do I recommend? DaVinci Resolve. And here's why. It's an excellent piece of software. It's a professional level software. It has all the functionality that you will need going forward and it's free kind of see there's a free version and a paid version and you might be thinking well of course the free version probably isn't going to give you that much it's it's there to get you to purchase the paid version the studio version and the truth is you're going to have access to a lot if you're a beginner you're just starting out you're going to have access to everything you need in the free version just to get started and then if you decide to buy the studio version you pay one time i bought resolve five or six years ago i paid once every time they come out with a new version i get a free update a free upgrade i don't know if that's going to continue forever this isn't a sponsored video i don't know what they have in the works what their plans are but like i said for for about five or six years now i've never had to pay aside from that initial payment. But again, if you're a beginner, starting out with the free version is more than enough. So with that said, let's jump into Resolve and let me just show you around. I'm gonna introduce you to some of the basic tools, but first I wanna give you a tour of the application itself, the different pages that are available and a little bit of the user interface. So coming down here to the far left corner, we have our media pool page. Now, I don't usually do much work here because I can just work with the media pool on the edit page, but that's what this is. It allows you to import your files and work with your files and organize them and, and things of that nature. Moving over, we have the cut page, which is a different workflow from the edit page. It's kind of a speed editor workflow. We're not gonna look at that today. Then we have our edit page. Then we have Fusion, which is compositing software. Then we have the color page, which Resolve is the industry standard in color correction software. And then you have Fairlight, which allows you to work with your audio. And then you have the render page. That's what this little rocket ship is. And when you're ready to render out your file, you can choose from various presets. Now back to the edit page. Again, quick tour of the interface. And one thing I wanna point out, if you make changes, if you start to get confused, things don't look right, you can always come back to the workspace menu and then down to the reset user interface option and you can just reset things and get it back to how it looked originally. What you'll find is different sections of your screen real estate are allocated for different menus. So let's start down here first. This is our timeline. This is where we're going to drag our footage, where we're going to watch everything that we're cutting together. This is where we're really kind of putting the pieces together on our project. Up here, we have our media pool. So we need to get some file in our media pool. All we have to do is open up the folder where our files sit, select those files, and then just drag and drop them right in the media pool. Now, if I wanna organize them a little bit more, I can right click on the master bin icon and I can add whatever folders I want. I can add different bins for different days of the shoot, different uh, cameras. Maybe we have an A camera, a B camera, a music folder, etc. You can add all the bins that you need to keep your files organized. And you can even reorganize after the fact. So if stuff's already on the timeline, it doesn't matter. You can reposition the files and it will adjust everything instantaneously. It's not gonna affect the playback of your timeline. So this is the media pool section. Now, if I click media pool, notice it closes that window. I can open up the effects. This is where you can access different transitions. I can close that out, reopen the media pool. Moving over, we have either one or two viewers. Now, if you have a file on the timeline, so let's actually click and drag this file right down on the timeline. And now let's click this dual viewer option. Make sure that you have both viewers turned on one is going to be your timeline viewer. So if we play the video on the timeline, we can do so, as you might have guessed, by clicking the space bar, and then we pause. This red playhead, wherever that sits, 
that's what's going to be shown in the timeline viewer. Now, if we click on a file from the media pool, this viewer here is our source viewer. This is going to show us whatever we're working with, whatever source file that we're currently working with in the media pool. And so we have access to looking at both views. If we click to the single viewer, and it's pretty straightforward. If you're working on the timeline, you're going to see what is currently displayed on the timeline. And if you're clicking and working with media in the media pool, you're going to be seeing what is currently selected in the media pool. Moving over, we have this section of screen real estate where we can open up our inspector, which gives us access to adjusting certain settings like volume of our selected clips. If we click again, we can switch to metadata, which is going to give us information about the metadata of whatever file we have selected. And again, notice how whatever we have selected from up here is what's displaying in this section of the screen. We can click Mixer, and that's going to display down here. So we have access to some of the audio controls that you would find in Fairlight. And that is something that you will see is that there's a lot you can do in the edit page that you can actually do in the other pages. OK, let's look at making some edits, because that's really if you're still watching this video, that's what you're here for. And with our file down on the timeline, let's say we want to make some cuts. So we already know we can click the space bar and we can play through. Once we've paused and we've found a spot where we want to make a cut, we can dial that in frame by frame by clicking the forward and back arrows on our keyboard. And then we can select the blade tool from our tools menu and we can just click and anywhere we click, we're going to make a cut on the footage, which means if we want to be able to select our footage, we need to come back, reselect the cursor or alternatively, we can use the keyboard shortcut of A to select the cursor and B to select the blade tool. And if you forget what these shortcuts are, just hover over the icons and you'll see that information displayed. So now we've made our cuts and we want to delete footage. There's a couple ways to do this. One, we can select the scrap footage that we want to get rid of and we can just click backspace and that's going to delete everything and it's going to leave a gap in the timeline where that footage originally was sitting. Another option, let's undo this, is to click the delete key and that's going to create a ripple delete, which is going to fill the gap. Now let's say we want to continue making cuts right on the timeline. I'm going to give you another option. Again, click with the space bar, find that spot where you want to make the cut, click pause, dial it in if you need to. And then instead of clicking with your mouse, you can click control B and you're going to make a cut right on the timeline where the playhead is. And then again, you can select and use your backspace or delete key to delete anything that you might need to delete. So that's a couple ways to edit right on the timeline. Let's get rid of this footage. Let's start over. But this time we're going to make our edits in the media pool. So I'm going to click and I'm going to select a clip. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play back exactly the same way. I can use my space bar, forward and backwards, arrows, find that spot where I want the clip to start. And this time I'm going to click the I key. That's going to set a mark in position. Now to set my mark out position, you probably guessed it. We find the position and then we click the O key. And now from here, we have three options to get the file on the timeline, depending on what we want on the timeline. The first is we can just click right in the center of the player here and we can just drag right down on the timeline. And that gives us both our visual and audio components, the whole file right on the timeline. But maybe we don't want the audio. Maybe we just want that visual component. Come back up, click the film strip, drag that down, and now you see you just have the visual aspect of the file. Likewise, if you want just the audio, you can click on the audio waveform icon and you can drag that down. Which brings up an important point. Let's delete all of this. Let's select another file. Maybe we want to make our edits on the timeline like we were before. Well, in this instance, we only want the visual aspect. We can double click on the file, grab that film strip icon, drag it down onto the timeline. And now we have the whole file, but just the visual aspect. Let's undo that. Let's drag everything down to just point out a couple of other settings for you. Maybe we have everything on the timeline, but we don't want the audio on this track to play. Well, we can click the M and that's going to mute the audio. But again, that's muting the audio on the entire track. That means any other clip you drag down, that audio is muted 
which means if we want audio, maybe we click on this clip and we want this audio in, we can drag it down and we can add another track, which is gonna give us an audio track now. If we undo that and we unmute the audio, there's another way, rather than having to work with multiple tracks and having to mute an entire track, maybe I just don't want the audio for this clip. Well, we can click on the clip, we can come up to the inspector and we can drag the volume setting down to zero and now there's no volume for that clip. Another option, let's undo this, let's come back to the clip right on the timeline. I'm gonna right click and you'll see where it says link clips. So if I have this file down on the timeline and I realize after the fact that I wanna delete the audio component, I can now separate out the components and select the audio component and delete it. Let's undo that. I'm gonna show you one other way to do it. We can just click right on the waveform, right on the audio component and drag it right down to zero. You can see it's doing the same thing that the inspector did and now we don't have audio. Now, maybe we've worked with multiple clips, we've made our cuts, we have everything where we want it to be and we wanna add a fade in and a fade out. All you have to do is come up to the corner, click on the handles and you can drag as many frames as you want the fade in to be and likewise the fade out to be. Now maybe everything's sitting on the timeline but you realize you wanna rearrange something and you wanna do it without having to spend much effort trying to move things around. Well, we can click on this clip and we can hit Control Shift and if we drag, you're gonna notice it's repositioning everything. It's not overriding the media. It's just gonna shove everything over so that this clip now gets inserted in a different location. Okay, so that's a nice little trick to know. Now, the last thing I wanna show you is that we can come up here and we can click on this icon that gives us control over our timeline settings. And we can click to turn on stacked timelines. And what that is gonna allow now is we have multiple timelines. And so we can have multiple versions of our project. We can have multiple scenes. There's just many different ways that you could choose to use this. And whatever timeline that you're working on, when you go to render, it's gonna render out that timeline as a final video file. So there you go. There's just a quick introduction to DaVinci Resolve. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Now, of course, I go into more detail in my Videography Essentials course, looking at the functionality, exploring the tools, and many of the concepts behind how and when to use the tools. Uh, and we'll come back, we'll look at Resolve again in future videos on this channel. So if you like this, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you soon. Take care.